So we have monolithic kernel, we have a microkernel, and then we also have the idea of an exokernel, and that's what was introduced in this paper. Again, this was in the mid-90s. The operating systems community paid lots of attention to it. It had a lot of interesting ideas. It described a very early research prototype. Later, there was a 1997 paper uh, that realized sort of more of the vision. So actually had three different, described three different exokernels that had been developed by their team. So the exokernel, unlike let's say the monolithic kernel, the exokernel is going to give applications control. So if we look at a particular application, the app can be in charge of its own paging, deal with scheduling, it can deal with uh, saving and restoring for context switches. It can deal with page faults. In fact, not only that it can deal with it, like if it doesn't deal with it, it doesn't happen. So if it doesn't save and restore on a context switch, the saving and restoring isn't going to happen. If it doesn't deal with page faults, then you're going to get a triple page fault and the application will be killed. And it also exposes this idea of library OSs. So the idea might be something like this. So this might be an application that's written kind of deal with everything itself. You can imagine another application, a traditional application, that we're going to just relay. We're going to call this App2. And App2 is uses POSIX APIs. So it's the Unix we've been talking about quite a bit. It can then be linked with a POSIX library. That is, it supports all of the POSIX system calls. Right? We already know that all applications, when they're making a system call, actually just make a call into a local library that itself makes a system call. In this case, the POSIX library is located here and doesn't make a direct one-to-one -one relationship between a POSIX call and a kernel system call. Instead, there's a POSIX call, and it will use exokernel facilities to do this. So this POSIX library is written for this exokernel. So we're going to have this POSIX library deal with the saving, restoring on context switch, paid fault scheduling, all that sort of thing. And then there's just a question of what are the interfaces going to be between this exokernel and this POSIX library. And that's what we're going to take a little bit of a look at. So one example might be what API might we need to provide so that the POSIX library could do a copy on write fork, for example, from user level. Uh, we've seen uh, one example of how that can be done with JOS. So JOS provides a mechanism that does allow a user level uh, copy on fork. Why? JOS is, is, is modeled after some of the sexo kernel approaches. Is it possible for a libOS to share securely? So for instance, can we set up, let's say, application 3 with a POSIX OS library? And can we make it so we can share things between these two libraries? So can we share, for instance, files between App2 and App3? Will enough applications benefit from having these custom libOS? So one thing to keep in mind is every application could have a different libOS if it wanted. So we could have an application Maybe it doesn't use a POSIX library. Maybe it uses a, let's say, a Windows library. And so it's providing the functionality of all the Windows APIs. The exokernel design philosophy is to expose a lot. We want to expose, we'll expose hardware. So as much as possible, we're going to expose to the uh, process, to the application, what the hardware is. We're going to also expose allocation. This hardware, by the way, means that if our device has a page table, then that is evident to the application. So yeah, it's close to that in terms, for instance, of JOS, where we can actually read the page table of our environment. So allocation. Allocation of what? Well, let's say memory, CPU, disk, other sorts of things. As well as exposing allocation, let's expose revocation. The exokernel will not transparently, for instance, evict a physical page for a particular process. Instead, that process or application will get notified about it. Uh, the, and so that's the revocation, let's say, of memory. Similarly for CPU, if my timer interrupt goes off, and I think it's now time for you as an application to stop, I will actually let you know about that. I'm letting you get involved in that 
and decide what to do when the CPU gets taken away from you. So I'm going to tell you when the CPU is given to you and tell you when the CPU is taken away from you. And the other thing they expose is naming. So the names of things. If we're going to deal, for instance, with memory, we're not going to just use uh, some arbitrary virtual uh, addresses. We can actually give you physical page numbers, for example. Or if we are dealing with CPUs, we can tell you which CPU you're on. Those sorts of things um, that we, it, this level of indirection where we have some mapping from a name to the actual hardware name, we're going to expose. So we're, we're not going to hide that from processes.